What's up, y'all? Got a banger from Cosmic Verse. Let's get straight into it. Don't chase women. You deserve someone that wants you back and won't play games like that. Preach. Not only that, but if in the rare instance she's not playing games and she's being serious, you could get in big trouble from that. Overall, it's just not worth it. Just shoot your shot. I mean, honestly, what do you actually have to lose? Just do it. Do she looks easy to draw. Shots fired! The science behind why women should let men pursue them. So men's brains were wired to be hunters. <laughs> Back in the day when guys had to go out and hunt for their food, um, their brains are wired to be better at picking up moving stimulus and taking visual cues. And they have a lot more of the hormone testosterone, which pushes them to go after what they want. So this is why in movies, you see a pretty girl walk by and then the guy notices and goes after her. This chase stimulates the reward center in a man's brain. Now for women, studies have shown that our brains are more wired to choose between different suitors. This is because with reproduction, women are the ones that get pregnant, carry the baby for nine months, and so we're taking the greater risk. So our brains are wired to help us be selective when choosing the best mate. So I say we get back to the natural order of things. Guys, work hard to pursue. Women, choose wisely. Men, bye. I actually, I actually agree with this. This is why you don't see the female peacocks, um, the ones that are colorful. In the wild, the men got to do the dance, the men got to do the courting, but also in the wild... Most of the time, they have multiple partners. <laughs> like, men aren't just settling for just one. Um, so, I actually agree with this. I think it's okay to chase. I like this traditional way of thinking. But I always, I always would say, like, the male peacock is the one that's colorful. The male peacock's the one that has to go out and do the dance to get the girl. So, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with this. And I think men, like, anything worth having is worth working for. And if you're working for it and a girl chooses you, great. But nowadays, women want equality, so you guys want equality so bad, you're going to have to start approaching us, since that's what you want. If you don't want equality, cool, we'll go back to the way it was. But since you guys want equality, we're going to have to go, you know, do things a little bit differently. And I think, in my personal opinion, let me know what you think, chat. This is just my opinion. I think women that approach men have a very high success rate because men never get approached. So ladies, if you do start approaching men, I believe you have a pretty high success rate. The only thing is, is that a lot of ladies don't have any game. Like most women I meet have do not have game. Um, so yeah. Oh my Lord. Okay. What do we got? A nonchalant man. Why? If he's not obsessed with you, what is he obsessed with? And why isn't it you? What is that? Baby, if I already ha ha your story like 47 times and I'm hearting all your little pictures and breaking my finger, like, are you picking up what I'm putting down? Because you're making, I feel desperate now. They think everyone wants them. Rejection isn't a thing women are used to, I guess. I mean, true. Take the guessing game out. If you want someone, let it be known to them. Yeah, stop playing games. We're not in middle school anymore. Start harding their stories. You made this video for the world to see, but can't say, hi, handsome. Are you single? For real. Well, the thing is, dude, I have like I have like 130,000 uh, followers on IG, and I maybe get one DM a month from a girl, and most of the time, the game is trash. It's like, hey, with seven Ys, or hey, uh, are you single? Like the, the like the pickup game is horrible. Like they really don't know how to approach a guy at all. Um, but that's just because women aren't taught that. Women aren't taught the game. They don't know how to approach guys. They don't like. <laughs> I've never met a girl that has good game. Let me know, chat. Have you ever met a chick that's like, you're like, man, this girl has got game. I've never really met a chick that has serious game. Well, that's a problem. But not my fault. I did everything I could. And you did too. Also, why are you still here? Did you know around 30 million men suffer from erectile dysfunction just in the United States? And around 50% of men experience some sort of ED in their lifetime? And I'm not a huge fan of pills, and I'm always looking for a more, may I say, natural way to help with size and performance. That's why I want to talk about today's sponsor, Bathmate. The pump that can take you from eh to hell right faster than you can say. Danger's my middle name. The Bathmate pump helps increase blood flow, leading to a firmer, longer lasting, well, you, you know. Now, before you get all excited, let me just say I am not a doctor, so please consult with a physician before using anything like this. Better safe than awkward, right? Don't take my word for it. Go check out Derek from More Plates, More Dates. He actually did an entire article on all of Bathmate's products, and I've linked it in the description. And I've linked Bathmate's suite of products in the description below. 
Yo, women love to call men thirsty, but they hate a man that they can't manipulate with their body. If they can't pop off that bra, shake a little ass, and he's not drooling all over her, she is pissed. Like, mm -hmm. how dare he ask for intellect, substance, a skill set, or conversation? Ugh, I'm a woman. I don't need to do any of that. <laughs> She's Dudes preaching. in 2024 are acting so f***ing feminine. It's actually terrifying. I love Wait, it. Wait, I thought that some women were tired of masculinity and all the toxicity that comes with it you wonder why there are so many lesbians out here now well this ought to be good well i'll tell you why because you guys are Stupid. acting feminine as f really how so if we want flowers you want flowers if we want you to take us shopping you want us to take you shopping you well you want wanted equality i thought that's what y'all wanted be treated like a woman you want to be treated like a princess huh you'd think that there'd be some women out there celebrating that some men are getting rather in touch with their feminine side mm-hmm it is so creepy. I think that dating the same sex is becoming more frequent these days because of that, because we are. Well, lesbian dating. relationships have a higher divorce rate and a higher breakup rate and higher vi domestic violence rate than heterosexual relationships. What are you talking about? Feminine ass men. And so we're just switching right over. So if some men are deciding that they're going to no longer act in the stereotypical masculine ways in which so many women have complained about over the years, then some of those very same women are going to then start dating women because the men aren't acting masculine anymore. Make it make sense. Damn, bro. It does not make sense at all, bro. <laughs> it doesn't make sense at all. You mean to tell me they just bought six inch stilettos for nothing? <laughs> it's because people always look for what is missing rather than what they have. Never happy. True. FOMO. Fear of missing out, dude. It's always FOMO. Never got flowers in my 27 years, but if I but if I get, I would be touched, but I never expect to get it. Bro, I, I've never gotten flowers. I never expect to get flowers. You know, the, you know, the only time men get flowers is at their funeral. I want someone to put as much energy into a relationship as I do, and if I can't take that, then bye. Preach that, Brent. Um, but yeah, that's just how it is. Men these days have been conditioned that you ladies don't want to be approached, so we've listened. What I discovered by not dating is money for me, and I don't have to hear someone else's kids. Hey, there you go. Don't be, don't be a hero, gents. I can be your hero, don't be a hero. Don't try to save anybody. And the thing is, like, in, if you're in your 20s, you're a younger guy, bro. You need to go fall in love with yourself where you fall in love with anybody else. You really need to go work your butt off and build yourself up to be the man that somebody else can fall in love with, and then you need to be rock solid ask a man out because she would rather play the weird game of trying to get him to know she likes him and wants nice. him to make the move it's time consuming it's a waste of time and it takes forever and a lot of men won't make the first move now because they've heard women say loud and clear that they don't want men to approach so why not cut out all that silliness and just make the first move on your own it's Chad, not let me know do you like girls with colored hair like stuff like this not that big of a deal the men of today are not interested in coming to save you because they don't see be I can be your hero, baby. <laughs> I love it. Behavior from you that is worth saving. Preach. When you act like a man, the expectation is for you to defend yourself like a man. There you go. And when you are out in the street fighting, when you are out at 3 a.m. involved in an altercation, men compartmentalize that. And they already know that you are not the caliber of woman that necessitates them risking their lives for and getting involved. See, you see, my husband, he is called to lay down his life for me. Not some random woman out at the club. Anytime my husband, when we're out, we go somewhere, he's assessing the threat. And when they see loud and obnoxious women showing out like a ratchet tang, they tune out. It's like they go away in their mind somewhere because they know that it is not worth the risk of putting their own lives in danger for someone that doesn't even value their own life or safety. That is true. This woman is preaching. Well, that's what we do as men, right? You want us to provide and protect. You have to allow us to protect. And that's the thing. A lot of women don't allow you to protect. Like you want us to lead. Well, the thing is you have to be willing to follow said lead. And so like, if something's going on and I tell Cass, hey, we're not going to go this way. We're going to walk around the other way. She doesn't question it. She's like, okay, let's just do that because she knows that my instincts are better in that regard. I'm thinking I'm thinking like three steps ahead. And when we go out, Cass just holds my arm. I'm assessing what's going on. I'm watching what's going on. So she can just live in la-la land and just follow me and look good. Us men, us women place guys into three categories. Okay. The first category is the guy that we meet and we instantly just want. The sexual chemistry is... Chats. 
Hi, we don't care what they do or how much they make. They are. She's a runner. She's a track star. Getting it. The second type is the guy that mm, he's okay. He's maybe not that good looking, but he is willing to spend money. He's gonna pay our bills. He's gonna buy us nice things. He's gonna take us on all the dinner dates. I ain't saying she a gold digger. <laughs> but is he the one? No. Is sexual chemistry high? Mid, probably. And then there's a third guy. The third guy doesn't have a shot in hell. There is nothing that he can do. There is no amount of money that he can make that would make us want him. He is a no right off the bat. Am I lying or am I telling the truth? Are you single or something. are you single? To chase. I saw this video of a girl talking about how if a guy wants to date you, you'll know. Like, if you're wondering if a guy wants to date you or not, he doesn't. If you're talking to a guy and you don't know if he wants to date you or not or what he's doing, or no, you're an option because you're acting like an option. Okay, listen. Guys want to work for something. If it's easy to them, they'll treat it like something that's easy, like come and go accessible. And you don't want to be that. Not only in the beginning of the time. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. As men, we don't mind working for things, but what we don't like is women like you playing these games. Stop playing the games and we'll start pursuing more. You want a carrot? Free. Sit. Wait. Free. Man, these carrots are thicker than cold peanut butter. <laughs> these things are that big around. Good lord. Sages, you don't want to be like that. Even during the relationship, you don't want to be like that. You still want to be something to chase in a healthy way. Do other things. Make your life so interesting without him. Go off of your phone for a few hours. Let him wonder what you're doing. Only See, bring it's these games right here that men don't want to play. We don't mind pursuing. Gents, let me know. Let me know in the comments. Do you guys hate pursuing? I don't mind pursuing the right type of women. Like Cass was the right type of woman to pursue. I believe that women that are hard to get are easy to keep. Keep Women that are easy to get are hard to keep. So ladies, if you're hard to get and hard to keep, it's a no-go for me. But if you're hard to get and easy to keep, great. And if you're easy to get and easy to keep, then you're, then you're a runner. She's a runner. She's a track star. So ladies, as soon as you stop... Stop playing the games. We'll go back to what we usually did. But the thing is, you guys wanted equality now, so you've squashed all of that. Him in environments where you're really valued. So whenever he goes there, he sees how the people around you are treating you. Stupid. And how valued you are. And in his mind, you know, don't This is a single woman, by the way. Act like an option and you won't get treated like an option. You want to be chased. No. This is some of the worst advice, but it's always the single women keeping other women single. Like, si um, sir, can you chew it first? Did you just, did you guys hear him? Can you chew it first? I don't know how to give doggy Heimlich maneuver. <laughs> Goodness gracious alive, son. Chew it. Men say I do not chase women, so you would pursue him instead. And if he disrespects you, you would get too scared to sit in a boundary so he would not disappear because he said he doesn't pursue. The truth is, some men will say a lot of things to make a woman jump when he clicks his fingers. However, to actually know does he pursue or not, you will see based on his actions and not his words. This new generation of men want you to chase them so bad. Now, I'm a firm believer that this new wave of spicy sororities comes from the generation that believed in raising your daughters and enabling your sons. Because a lot of these men were so used to being praised for doing shit they should be doing, or they're so used to somebody uh, not holding them accountable, now they feel like, okay, you go get you a little charger, a little apartment, you think I'm just supposed to chase after you because you think you're doing something special. You're 36! But this is exactly why- I love it when a woman tells her bop lore. <laughs> She's talking specifically about a specific guy. Uh, you will praise a single father, but bash a single mother. You'll praise a man for he's a bachelor when he got his own car and crib. Meanwhile, I got a car, crib, and degree. You still gonna ask me where my man at? Girl! I think what is happening with this new wave of just awakening, we are realizing like, yeah, yo dingling don't really mean that much. Okay, you are a human like anybody else. Come up. She's a runner. She's a track star.
mm-hmm. off that pedestal that I know the patriarchy likes to prop you up on. You don't get gold stars for the patriarchy doesn't prop men up on the pedestal. If anything, women are pedestalized right now. Look at the look at the lonely fans right now. A girl can get online, sell her butthole for four ninety nine mm-hmm. and make hundreds of thousands of dollars with no you know no pedigree acumen no no degree no nothing she can just get online and sell her body men can't do that men have to build their value and women are born with their value what are you even talking about taking care of your kids you don't get gold stars for having a car in a crib you don't get gold stars for going to work you should many of us have been doing it since we was 15 and 16 because these men does she give you are you getting a lot of feminine energy i'm getting a lot of sharp energy (laughs) Maybe it's the studded jacket here, but she's giving off very masculine energy. So no wonder she's alone. Used to being enabled, the girls who were raised, who y'all been checking for us since we came out the coochie, uh, watching our every move, not even giving us the grace to be children. Stupid. Yeah, we not going for that shit. So tighten up. Real man. Okay, well then die alone. I, I don't know. What the, I don't know what the whole thing is. It's like us men, we're not gonna put up with that. We're not going to put up with that. And I was talking to Cass about this the other day. It's like when men, Loki, go to your place. When men move up in their career and they get resources and they get money and they start to really flourish in their lifestyle and flourish in their life, they think, oh, great. Now I can have a family. Now I can have a wife. Now I can have kids. When women make money, they think, oh, great. Now I can be independent. I don't need a man. It's a complete different ideology. So ladies, yes, we're supposed to go out there and do that, but we do that so we can have a family. You do that so you can be independent of men. Shots fired! It's a, and like when, when women say they're independent, independent of what? A man. Like Cass and I were at TJ, I think I've told this story, but Cass and I were at TJ Maxx the other day and uh, she was like carrying something that she wanted. And I was like, babe, you were just such an independent woman and you don't need no man. <laughs> and she's like, uh, no, I'm a dependent woman and I need a man. <laughs> and that's why I love her. She's so based. I got lucky, bro. I really did. I was just in the gym and I saw a very attractive woman in there. Okay. She was like partially Asian. I like Asian women. That's besides the point. She was probably 40 years old. I'm 24, but she was very, very attractive. She might've been in her mid thirties. Anyway, she was working out and I was working out. I didn't want to say anything to her while she was working out. So I waited until she was done working out and she was like over in the stretch area stretching. Mind you, I have not said anything to a girl in the gym in years. So I'm like, what the hell? This woman is very attractive, so I'm going to go say hi. The worst thing she can do is say no. So she had her headphones out. I walked up to her. I said, hey, what's your name? I shit you not. She gave me the dirtiest look of all time and said, I'm married. And I just kind of laughed. I was like, oh, sorry, and kind of walked away. Five minutes later, the employees at the gym come up to me and say, hi, we have had multiple reports of you harassing women in the gym. I was like, multiple reports? I just asked that lady what her name was. They were like, yeah, we know. We saw the cameras. It wasn't a big deal. But this woman is upset that you asked her that. So slowly, the worst she can say is no is becoming way worse. So the employees then inform me that my presence at the gym is making this woman extremely uncomfortable and I have to leave for the night. I didn't look at her. I didn't even see her after I asked her name. So they were like five minutes away from closing anyway. So I was like, all right, I was almost done with my workout anyway. I'll just leave. And I shit you not. It was seven minutes on the dot since I said, tried to say hello to this woman. I walk out of the gym. Her husband is parked right in front of the gym. How do I know it was her husband, you may ask? Because his windows were rolled down. And when I walked out of the gym, he said, hey, motherfucker, come here. So obviously I knew exactly who he was after he said that. I just kept walking and pretended like I didn't hear him. And now I'm in my car and he is somewhere right over there. The worst she could say is no, right? This That is-, is wild. That's crazy work. I feel bad for this guy. And I feel like other guys have gone through this as well. Man, that's absolutely brutal. I couldn't imagine. But the thing is, I never, I haven't had to really date in the modern dating market. I started, I started like seriously dating like seven or eight years ago. I was like 26 or 27. It's like Tinder was at the Genesis. Bumble was at the Genesis. A lot of those things were like kind of at the very beginning, like the infancy of the online dating world. But now I got a buddy who's two years older than me and he just got out of like a 10 year relationship and he's back in the game. He's back on like a dirty thong. You know what I mean? 
He's in the dating market, and he's like, man, it's absolutely brutal. Like, it's all hookups. But he got a roster, so I'm proud of him. But, like, at the same time, Jordan Peterson has a quote about this. The more you're promiscuous, the more you're alone. Because the only common denominator, the only person that you're with consistently is yourself. That's why I think we're better together and together we're better. I think building meaningful relationships is the best thing you can do as a person. We didn't make it this far in humanity by being single people. I just That's just me. And I think children are raised better in a nuclear family where the husband and wife that made the child are married. The child can see, oh, this is a good, um, this is a good benchmark for what a good relationship is. Therefore, I'm going to go out and be a productive citizen. But a lot of these kids, a lot of girls are raised by single moms, and then they go out and be single moms. Single mom. And as we've seen, I've showed up this, I've showed the stats before. It's like single moms do a really bad job of raising children. The majority of the degeneracy in modern society are from single moms and fatherless homes. Now, we have to take accountability as men, though, because if men are the leaders and the movers and shakers of these relationships, we have to take accountability. So we need to stop getting with women we're not married to and then having children with them. You know, stop being promiscuous. As much fun as it is, trust me, I did it in college, but now I feel bad about it doing it later on because I know that more than likely there's another man paying for the mistakes and trauma of the men of uh, uh, one of this girl's past, and I was part of her past. And so, you know, in the same token, I'm glad that she's happy now, but I probably caused some of that. So I have to take accountability and say, yeah, that's my fault. So I think us as men, we need to step up and say, hey, these are the things we're not going to do. And if we can make a change, then the ripple effect will happen. And that's why I'm such a big proponent of ending the freaking simp edemic. We have to stop simping on women. If Lonely Fans girls didn't have anybody to donate to them, then that entire industry would crumble. But the thing is, these women can upload their buttholes for $4.99 and guys will go on there and pay for it. If we stop paying for it, guys, these ladies will stop uploading it. We are perpetuating the degeneracy in society that we have right now. So us as men have to step up and do something. And I'll tell you, I know I say this a lot, but there's three things you can do right now to unbuck your life, bro. Number one, go listen to As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. It is completely free. doesn't cost you a penny. Number two, start going to the gym regularly. Three days a week if you can. It doesn't matter if you know what you're doing or if you, if you do know what you're doing. Just start going, getting in the habit of going to the gym. Terry Crews has a quote. He goes, the hardest part about going to the gym is going to the gym. And number three, eat a whole food diet. Eat meat, eggs, vegetables, you know, fruit. Go eat good organic whole food. Like Loki, eat carrots. <laughs> he loves them. You do that and I promise you'll unbuck your life. You want a you bonus one? Consume better content. Stop consuming trash. Stop doom scrolling and just being on your phone. Check your phone. I, I dare you guys right now, if you have your phone on you, do this. Do, let's do a little, little test real quick. Get on your phone. I want you to check what your screen time is on your phone right now. Put it in the chat for me. What's your screen time every day on your phone? Is it more than four hours? You're spending four hours on your phone every day. And I'm sorry, but if you're not making any money on your phone, bro, you shouldn't be on your phone for like four to five hours a day. I'm on my phone six to seven hours a day. But the thing is, I have YouTube. I do Instagram. I make content on my phone. I go back and forth with brand deals. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bit different. Like my phone is a little bit of my business, you know, but if you don't have anything that contributes to a monetary value in your life and you're on your phone all the time, it's really just a distraction to the things that are actually important. Sorry, I'm doing some things back here. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to cop the ebook, The Four Pillars of Personality. It makes you irresistible to women and respected my men. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Loki, did you have a good time? I guess he did. Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I'll see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.